Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna be talking about how to make friends as an adult because I've been seeing this all over TikTok that people are just so lonely and don't know how to make friends and, and don't know how to foster adult friendships with people. So that's what we're talking about today. I'm going to be getting ready. I'm gonna be shooting content today here in LA. It's finally a sunny day, so I'm gonna put on my face and we're gonna talk. Starting out with the Kiehl's Hyaluronic Acid. I've been using this for I think three days now, which isn't really long enough to give you a full review. First, we're gonna talk about mindset because when you transition from being in school and being in college to having your official adult life with, you know, a full-time job, responsibilities, whatever, I think people have the same expectations and I think that is where they go wrong because as a college student, you're automatically in the same environment with people that also want to be friends. But that is not at all what happens when you get in the real world. Whenever I am trying to make new friends or just meet new people, I enter with the mindset of I'm going to meet new people and they may or may not be my best friend. I'm next going to use the Clinique Moisture Surge, which has SPF 28. It is a little bit sunny out and so I'm gonna be outside taking photos. I need to make sure that it's covered. Before I go outside physically to go meet new people, I just tell myself I'm just gonna meet new people. They don't have to be my best friends. They don't have to be someone that I really like or really vibe with, but interacting and talking to new people and having a friendly conversation is my expectation when I go out to these things. The other thing that I encourage people to do is to just be open-minded like i said when i go out i do not expect to meet and fall in love with the first person that i meet that really allows me to be open to the type of people that i meet and also if they have different interests or backgrounds or personality than i do again that doesn't mean i have to keep this person around but by being open-minded and hearing what other people have to say even if you totally disagree with it it's just a way for you to meet people. The more people you meet, the more likely it is that you are going to meet someone that has similar values and interests and likes and dislikes as you do. That tends to develop over time. So if you have the expectation that you're gonna meet someone, you're gonna hit it off immediately, and y'all gonna be the best friends forever and ever and ever, you're setting yourself up to be disappointed in the end. Just being open-minded and learning something new and wanting to learn what other people can offer in terms of friendships or just ideas or even feedback for you. So let's say you meet someone and they work in a similar field to you, but but not exactly the same field. You can still use their feedback and you know what they have to say about their everyday life in their job or how they're able to navigate their job. That's just an example. I typically don't talk to people about work when I first meet them because I like to get to know people as their individual selves. So I wanna know their personality before I even talk about what they do for a living. It's very backwards for someone who lives in LA. LA is notorious for being a huge networking space because everyone is trying to get to the top. Just by being open-minded, I can then interact with other people and learn about them as a person, learn about them as a colleague or professional or a friend by just approaching it with that mindset. But that being said, you should still pay attention to the red flags. So yes, I'm open-minded. Yes, I'm gonna listen to what people have to say, but if they say something that is totally off the charts that I'm just like, there's no way I would I would even be friends with you. I'm not gonna talk to them. If someone that I've met for the first time, I'll be like, oh, you know, it was really nice meeting you, but I have to go now, or I have plans, so I have to leave now. And that's just how I exit the conversation, right? It doesn't have to be anything rude. It doesn't have to be me calling them out on something. If we just don't buy personally, it's totally fine. I just keep it moving and keep it pushing. Today I'm gonna go in with the Lancome um, foundation they sent me, it has SPF 20. It has SPF 25, so I'm gonna use this today because again, I am shooting content. Like I said, there are red flags in friendships. There are red flags in familial relationships. There are red flags in romantic relationships. If you wanna know about the romantic relationship red flags, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video. 
But in terms of friendships, if there is someone that you just have two completely different takes on life, just carry yourselves completely differently, or if you get this feeling that this person just, something's not quite right, go with that feeling. Go with that feeling. So I've gotten this on two ends, right? I was talking to someone and they said something that I thought was a little, a little fishy. So I just asked them a clarifying question, like, oh, like, what do you mean? And when they started to explain, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm not gonna talk to you again. And that is totally okay. Again, you don't have to be friends with someone, especially if you're just meeting someone for the first time. And the way I ask these clarifying questions isn't to challenge their thinking, it isn't to call them out, it's not to be rude, but it's really just for me to understand where they're coming from and why they may think that way. As an example, I was talking to this one girl who I had just met and she told me a story about how she had treated her previous best friend before she moved here to LA. That was a huge red flag to me because some of the things that she was saying that she had done in the past, in the, in the distant past, were things that she had recently repeated in the recent past. I was like, oh, okay, seems like you haven't really changed much. So, you know, I'm just not gonna be your friend. No shade, I'm just not gonna talk to you. It's fine, you don't have to talk to everyone. You don't. When you do find someone that the first interaction or the first few interactions seem to be going very smoothly and you guys have similar interests, similar ideas, or you think you would work well together, that's when you can then start to build the friendship. And again, this takes time. So a lot of people think that it's gonna happen overnight, but if you think back to when you were either in college or in like grade school, you probably didn't become friends immediately. In most cases, you don't become friends immediately. It takes time, although since you're in school, and you interact with each other every single day, it happens a lot faster than it would friendship will form in adult world. As an example, I meet somebody that I think we hit off pretty well and you know, we have very uh, similar characteristics. I will ask them for you know their Instagram or their phone number in the future for coffee or do you wanna meet up in the future for brunch or something? Your schedule usually like, would you be open to something like this? Generally people say yes, right? So it's really easy to get a guest out the front gate. However, it's where the scheduling, the work and the other responsibilities that get in the way when trying to meet up with friends. I will typically try to meet up with someone like a week maybe or two after we initially meet and kind of like feel it out the w that way to see if I like them and they like me and we continue to vibe. But you have to be intentional about meeting up with adult friends because everyone has a schedule. Everyone already has their life together, right? If it's someone that's like, oh, I'm free whenever, just hit me up. Okay, yeah, cool, do that. But if some people, have jobs where they aren't you know readily available the next day or the next week or something so you kind of have to plan a little bit in advance i think that's where a lot of friendships a lot of adult friendships fail is because people are intentional with meeting up consistently and making plans together as an influencer it's super easy for me to do this because i typically invite people as plus ones to the events that i'm invited to and that's a great way for me to hang out with them and also see like how or if they would fit into my like influencer slash professional life. Influencing is very weird industry, so it's not exactly professional, but it's not exactly casual. Anyway, and then if so, if there's someone that I think is really outgoing and can interact with a lot of people very easily, then I'll invite them to those type of group events. If not, if they're more introverted and like to have like the one-on-one -on -one connections, then I'll just invite me and them to something as simple as coffee and see if they want to go. I think a lot of people get caught up too where they expect after the first or second time like it's gonna go over well and they're gonna continue to hang out. But again, you have to be intentional and you have to repeatedly ask people to hang out and just keep an open mind. Sometimes people are gonna cancel, but if it becomes they're canceling every single time, then you don't hang out with them. You can kind of tell if they wanna be your friend and they wanna be intentional about being your friends versus someone who's keeping you around for convenience. So that's a very, very fine line. I just went in with my favorite Fenty Beauty contour. It's in the shade Espresso. And I think I'm gonna go with a Sephora High Noon highlighter for my highlight today. If you are not someone that will typically go up to someone and introduce yourselves, you can always just go to an event. And this really depends on where you're located. Here in LA, there is always, 
always an event every weekend every day even the weekdays there's always something going on so it's really easy to find events that will align with your interests where you can, you can find someone who has similar interests that you have however if you live in another city or a more suburban or even a rural area i tend to use eventbrite when i lived in the suburbs so i could find different events that were going on in either a nearby city or within my area it's super easy to find you can find free events you can find ticketed events but eventbrite is typically the place that i go every single time to find out what's going on and i go to the events that i'm interested in so if i'm interested in art per se then i'll look for the art events and i'll go to one and again i just go with the mindset of i may meet somebody cool i may meet somebody that's not really cool but i'm gonna meet new people i also recommend that you go see the events on your own because if you go with someone that you know and you have known them for a long time you're very comfortable with you are less likely to meet a new friend or to go out of your way to talk to someone new. If you're someone that latches on to somebody else or if you're someone that's really introverted and you know that you're not going to force yourself out of your comfort zone if someone else is there, go by yourself. And also, this is a really cool way to introduce yourself to new things. For example, when I originally moved to LA, I was like, I wanna try salsa dancing classes. And I found an event on Eventbrite and I signed up for it and I went. I had never taken salsa dancing classes before, but it was a class for beginners, so there were other people who were also interested in it, and had never done it before either, and I was able to meet a cool, cool people. Just because I met those people at that event doesn't mean that I'm gonna hang out with them again, but because I went to that event in the first place, it opens me up to be able to, one, be more comfortable talking to people that I don't know, and two, trying new activities and trying out new hobbies to see if there's something that I like. I think I'm gonna go in with Caramello today in a uh, NYX shade. It's okay, I have a very basic outfit today for content, so it should be fine. Anyway, so my last thing that is incredibly important when you're trying to make new friends is to make sure you follow up. Like I said earlier, I will probably wait like a week, maybe two weeks, depending on our schedules to see if we can hang out again in the future. And I'll let them know that too. Like I'll say, you know, I'm really busy next week, but I would love to hang out with you the following week and we can maybe meet up for brunch or something. If they don't like doing brunch, okay, we can go do this other thing or try out this exercise class or something so that opens it up for them they can either say yeah I would love to or actually I'm also really busy next week or the following week you know whatever but it's important that you follow up and even if your schedules don't align immediately to just try again in the future or sometime later to see if you guys can hang out and become friends I'm not sure this enough it is going to take time to make new friends especially when you've just moved to a new city and you may not know anyone and if you're really introverted and you don't often put yourself out there to meet new people so this is definitely a slow burn but it's worthwhile i like to think of making new friends as dating where it's like you go on a few dates with that person you see if they really like them you see if they like you and after a while it can develop into a friendship you think i would say it's more stressful than dating because with dating you're like oh whatever but with friendships it's someone that you're probably going to be around for a long time probably even longer than any romantic relationship so that's why i take a lot of time to develop friendships and just take my time with meeting new people and figuring out if we you know vibe together if we don't i hope this was helpful for you i forgot to put on my setting spray so this is the one size one till dawn match mattifying setting spray it's absolutely incredible i love how it just mattifies my face so i hope this is helpful for you i hope you really enjoyed this video if you have any questions or me do a future video about more red flags let me know in the comments and i will see you guys later bye